Hey everyone, this is Michael from Up and Running Tutorials, and in this video, we'll learn how to use a layout component to share common sections and styling between pages. So, we've created a new Gatsby project using the default starter, and we've opened it in VS Code and started Gatsby's development server so we can see our project in the browser. If you're not sure how to get to this point, check out the link in the description below to an earlier video where we walk through how to start a new Gatsby project. Assuming you've done that, let's talk about how layout components work in a Gatsby project. If we navigate around our default starter, here we are on the home page, we'll notice that there are some elements in common between this page and page two. We notice that this purple header exists on both pages. Let's just double check. Yep, it's always there. And also this footer seems to be there on both pages. 2019 built with Gatsby. Let's just check on page two. 2019 built with Gatsby. Okay, so that seems to be common. And there's also some styling that doesn't exist by default in a browser, like the way this content sits in from the edge a little bit. It's got some nice comfortable room around it. Let's see if that's also on the home page. Yep, okay, so we've got a bit of breathing room here. So there's some styling as well that seems to be common on both pages, while the content in the middle is changing. So heading back to the home page here, let's look at the code to see what we have in common between these two pages. Here in the index.js file, which corresponds with the home page, we can see some of the unique content we have. This, hi people, welcome to your new Gatsby site, etc. We know this is different on page two. Let's open page two as well. Right, so we have different content here in the middle, but we notice that we have the same layout component on both pages that wraps this inner content. Let's just confirm that's on the index page. Okay, so we see that this layout component, which is being imported from the components folder, is used on both pages. And what if we were not to use this layout component? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna change it just to a normal div, let's say. And my VS Code automatically changed the closing tag. Make sure you do that manually if you need to. I'm gonna give this a save. And whoa, okay, so we see that when we remove the layout component, suddenly all of the shared elements are gone. If we navigate to page two, we'll see that page two still has all of those elements. What happens if we remove the layout component from page two? So we'll do the same thing here. We'll just replace the layout component with a div and save that file. Okay, and now we can see that page two has lost those shared elements as well. So I'm gonna replace the layout component in both files. So this div, I'm gonna put back to the layout and give it a save, that's great. Heading back to the homepage, I'm gonna go back to index.js and do the same thing. I'm gonna use the layout component instead of the div as the wrapper save the file, and all of those shared elements are back. Well, so that confirms that the layout component is contributing those pieces to each page. Let's now open the layout component and see how this works. So if you're new to Gatsby, and if you're also new to React, the first time you open the layout component that comes by default, you might feel a bit intimidated by a lot of strange looking code. I know I certainly did. The first thing you need to know is that all of this will look very normal to you after a little while with Gatsby. We're going to slowly go through what all these things are. But for now, there are pieces in here that we absolutely don't need. And so we're going to simplify this file quite a bit right now so that it's easier to look at and we can just focus on the essentials of how this works. For example, this static query code right here, which probably looks the scariest if you're new to Gatsby, is just here to pull in the title of the site from your your Gatsby config file. Using GraphQL to pull in your data from the files in your project and also from sources outside of your site will eventually become very normal to you, but we haven't covered that yet and it's totally optional. So we're gonna remove this part of the code and anything else that's distracting us from the basics of how a layout component can help you share sections and styling between all your pages. So I'm gonna move above the existing layout component here and just do some rewriting to show you how simple this layout component really can be. So a layout component is just a normal React component. The version in the Gatsby starter uses this ES6 syntax that you can use to write a function. I'm gonna use this older syntax that you might be more familiar with, function layout. It's just a function that returns some JSX. Okay, so this is going to be equivalent to what's down here, but we're just gonna simplify it a bit. Let's scroll down and see what JSX we're returning. 
we are returning this JSX, which represents the HTML that ends up on the site. So I'm just gonna copy this, move it up, and then we're gonna simplify it a bit because it still looks a bit too scary. Okay, I'm gonna tab these parts back just so it's easier to look at. Now, there's still a lot going on here. So I wanna simplify things even more by extracting some of these components so that we can understand what they're really for. We see that as an example, Gatsby is including some footer markup and content here. Let's extract this so that this layout component becomes simpler to read. I'm gonna create a new component up here. I'm gonna call it function footer. And then this component is going to return this footer markup from below. So I'm gonna cut it out of this component and paste it into this component. And then to render this same markup, I'm just going to add the footer like this. And then to make this still easier to read, we notice that Gatsby is including a div here with some basic inline styles declared, but this is kind of still distracting for us to look at. So I just want to extract this into its own component as well. So I'm gonna create another separate component up here. I'm gonna call it wrapper because this is basically just a div meant to wrap the main page content. We're going to return some markup. And this time what we're going to return is this div and its closing tag. I'll be back to fix this. I'm going to paste this in here and my editor has automatically added the closing tag. And then we're gonna talk about a React concept called props. Understanding props is the key to understanding the layout component. And so I'm gonna show you in a couple places in this file how we can use it. So for now, I'm going to write props here and props.children here, and then we'll be back in a moment to discuss how this works. First, I just wanna fix what we've done here. Now, instead of a div, we're using our wrapper component from above and it has a closing tag as well. And it's wrapping the main and footer areas here. This children prop here also needs to come from the props object. We're gonna discuss this in just a moment. And we're going to replace the value of this site title prop with just Gatsby default starter. And we're now ready to remove the old version of the layout component. I'm gonna remove these prop types for now as well because we don't need them to begin with. I'm gonna remove these imports that we're not using and I'm gonna give this file a save. And as we can see, nothing has changed on the front end. We've just simplified a bit how this looks. So now it's a bit easier to examine exactly what's happening in the layout component itself. We've defined a normal React component. It returns a header component. And then inside of a div that we've named wrapper, we render a footer component. And then inside this main tag, we render props.children. So what is this props word that we're using here and then we're reusing here? Props are a really important React concept. And if you're new to React, the simplest way to think about them is that props are values that you can pass into your components. The concept is very similar to passing arguments into your functions in JavaScript. When you're using React and you create a custom component, which you tell React you've done by naming your function with a capital letter, React will automatically make this props value available to you. Technically, props is just an object. If we wanna see what that object object contains, we can just log it to the console. So I'm going to go into this area of our component. We haven't done anything previously in this area, but this area outside of the return statement is a place where you can just use normal JavaScript. So if there's any logic you want to run through before you decide what JSX you'd like to return, this is the area where you would do that. So one simple thing we can do here is say console log props. Let's just see what we have. So I'm going to give that a save and then I'm going to go to the browser and I'm going to open the dev tools. And then we can see here that we have logged an object, which we can tell by the curly braces. And that object has a single value right now, which is called children. And if we look at what's inside children, it's an array that has six values, most of which are HTML elements, an H1, a paragraph, another paragraph, and a div. These children correspond to the elements that are inside of the layout component on the home page. So if we navigate to index.js and we can see the layout component that's being logged right now, we're logging this instance of the layout component because we're on the index page in the 
the browser, we can now get a better understanding of what layout's children prop contains. This H1 corresponds to the H1 on the homepage. Then there are two paragraph tags, and we can see we have two paragraph tags here. Then a div, we can see a div follows that. And then this last element corresponds to this Gatsby link custom component. So the children prop refers to the components that are nested inside of the component when it is used, just as we would nest HTML normally. So if we head back to the layout component here, we now have a better understanding of what children refers to. I'm going to remove this console log just to simplify what we're looking at. Besides the children prop, in React you can pass any prop you like into a component. It doesn't have to just be children. To pass a custom prop into a component, all you need to do is include that prop name as an attribute like this when you use that component. You write the attribute using camel casing like this. You can name any prop you like and its value will now be passed along to the header component. If we open header.js, just to take a quick look at that, we can see that it is accessing its site title prop. This syntax with the curly braces here is known as object destructuring. If you're not familiar with that JavaScript concept, it basically means we're drilling down one layer in the props object and extracting the value of this key. If we want to simplify this, we can remove these curly braces and just access props here and then replace site title with props.sitetitle. This might make more sense to you at first if you're new to React and just want to get used to the idea that every component is passed a single object known as props and then you can add as many props onto that object as you want and their name will correspond to whatever name you use when you render the component. So in this case site title is passed along and added to the props object of header. When we define a component like layout, including the children prop inside of the return statement tells React that you'd like any components that are nested inside of the layout component to be rendered right here. As you can see, when we tell React, hey, I want you to use the value of props children in this position, we surround that with curly braces. Why are these extra curly braces here? Well, let's see what happens when we remove them. I'm going to take the first one away. Away, take the second one away. If I save the page now, we see that rather than rendering the value of props.children, it's actually rendering just the text props.children. That's because by default in JSX, because this represents HTML, any text that you write inside of an element is interpreted as text that should be shown on the page as is. In our case, we don't want the text props.children to show, we want the value of props.children to show. So a Essentially, we want the value of a variable to be used here, which means we want JSX to interpret this as JavaScript. So inside of your JSX, if you would like to insert some JavaScript logic, that is what the curly braces are for. Anything inside of curly braces will be read as normal JavaScript. This makes your components much more reusable because it means some of the values can be variables that you pass in so that your components doesn't always show the exact same content. If I give this a save now, we see that our actual children components are back. Hopefully it's now clear what happens when we render props.children inside of our layout component. We used this exact same children concept to create this wrapper component that we've used in this file. The wrapper component also accepts props and places its children inside of a div with some basic container styling. This means that any elements that we place inside of wrapper when we use wrapper will show up right here inside of this div. And that's why we can place our main and footer inside of the wrapper component down here. So that's how a layout component works. It's basically a component that renders its children along with a few other components that should always appear. So why would you want to use a layout component in your Gatsby project? Well, the first thing to know is that you don't have to. It's a good concept to be familiar with since you'll see it in the Gatsby documentation and you'll see it in the default starter, but you don't actually have to use it yourself 
itself, if your project only contains a single page, then perhaps it's not useful for you to think about sharing components and styles between multiple pages. This idea becomes helpful basically if you have components that you would like to share between multiple pages and if you have styling that you'd like to share between pages. So if you have sections like a header, like a footer, other common examples are navigation, sidebars, that type of thing. If those pieces show up on more than one page, it can be helpful to render them once inside of a wrapping layout component. Another efficiency that you get from using a layout component is that any styling that you would like to appear on every page can be imported just once in your layout component. We haven't talked yet about how to write CSS in Gatsby. There are many ways you have a lot of options. For now, just know that if you write normal vanilla CSS in a .css file, you can simply import the file in a statement like this and Gatsby will load this CSS when this component is rendered. There's nothing else you have to do. So if you have any global CSS like a reset, it can be efficient to just import that CSS one time in your layout component. We have named this component layout. That's just a convention in Gatsby. It'll match the docs, but you can name this absolutely anything you want. I often name it base. You could call it global. It does not have to be named layout. So feel free to name this file whatever makes the most sense to you. So that's how layout components work in Gatsby. Hopefully that helps you to understand the layout.js file that comes with the default starter and how you can customize it and simplify it so that it helps you share any components or styling that you would like to appear on multiple pages in your project. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at how to write CSS in a Gatsby project so you can start to customize how your project looks and feels. Until then, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.